when it comes to when it comes to new players to the game the first piece of advice that I give them they show up and they go hey blade um, I'm new to rise of kingdoms what do you recommend I do my first answer to them is uninstall <laughs> my yes. my second answer is if you're gonna ignore my first answer pick China reason why you pick China is because it comes with Sun Tzu. It comes with Sun Tzu. And Sun Tzu is by far the best epic commander in the game. And you get building speed to build your city faster. Yeah. Yep. We we know Castro. We know. <laughs> um so uh you've got AoE damage, which there are a couple other commanders that do uh, AoE damage that are epics. But Sun Tzu definitely has the best AoE in the game in terms of an epic commander. And uh, you have a garrison damage, or sorry, uh, you have a garrison tree to go along with that um, for protecting your city in the early game, um, along with a garrison uh, skill. And then um, his other two skills are definitely decent. 20% increased skill damage is 20% increased skill damage is fire and um, this is just an enhancement of the art of war where it takes it to from uh, 450 damage to 800 damage and it takes it from three targets to five targets so it's definitely an important expertise now uh, so always start with China because not only do you have the building speed which the majority of your beginner Rise of Kingdoms life is going to be to get T4 as fast as you can. Um, so in order to get T4, you have to upgrade your buildings. And in order to upgrade your buildings efficiently, having a building speed buff is awesome. <clears throat> now... Uh, the reason why starting with China is important is not only for those reasons, but also it comes with Sun Tzu and also there are certain events where when you do them, you get heads for the commander that you started with. Now, if you started as any other, you know, let's say you started as France, you're an idiot, you should uninstall. But if you start as France and you use a civilization change to change to China, your it doesn't affect your starting commander, so your heads are still going to be for the epic Joan of Arc. Okay. Um, so people that are like less than a million power or haven't invested money wise at all, um, I I recommend that they start over and start with china just because the five percent building speed in the long run and the starting with sun tzu and being able to get this art of war um skill essentially for nothing by doing your expedition uh daily you know expedition shit getting to level i don't know 20 can't remember what it is but doing your um single single player campaign expedition um it, that gives you heads for your primary commander, along with other early on events in the game. Now, that's who your starting commander should be. And with that, um, there are some other things to go with that piece of information as well. Such as, a lot of people think that because you have a barracks, a stable and an archery range for three different unit types, infantry, cavalry, archers, that you should have three marches. That is not the case. You should always train troops in all three of your buildings, but you should focus on one particular building for your training speeds until you have 
at least 200,000, arguably 300,000 uh, T4 troops of that unit type. So, if I'm going with Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu is an infantry commander. Therefore, I'm going to invest all of my training speedups on infantry troops. Um, I recommend that as you go from T1, T2 to T3, that once you unlock T4, uh, bas basically during the T1, T2, and T3 stage, don't upgrade any of your troops from T1 to T2 or from T2 to T3. Basically, just keep training troops that are in that particular uh, bracket. So, you know, once you've, like, let's say you have 10,000 T1 troops and you unlock T2, go ahead and start training T2 troops as opposed to upgrading from T1 to T2. Then once you have T4 unlocked, start at your T1 and upgrade those T1 to T4 until that's finished. Then upgrade your T2 to T4 and then upgrade your T3 to T4. And then after then start training brand new troops. But you're using all of your training, uh, you're using all of your training speedups to get a full march. Because if you have a commander at level 60 as your primary commander, that means that you're going to be able to have 200,000 troops. And if you use a 50% troop expansion boost, which looks like this, you increase your troop capacity. You use Germany. Good, Gary. That's why I was able to fuck you up so easily. Um, if you use the 50% troop expansion, that takes you from 200,000 maximum troop capacity to 300,000 maximum troop capacity. That's why it's arguable that... Um, that uh, you train 300,000 troops for a, sh a certain type other than um, uh, 200,000. So now the next question is, uh, who do you pair Sun Tzu with? I know, I know, I know. Go ahead, Castro. Bjorn. Yep. If you are free to play, the answer is Bjorn Ironside. So... Um, Bjorn has some skills that are good to pair with uh, with Sun Tzu. Um, does direct damage, which is uh, which is sorry, uh, causing target up to two nearby enemies to take fifteen percent increased skill damage. So essentially, his his main uh, his active skill, as it's called, um, causes the main target and up to two enemies to take 15% increased skill damage. And why is that great? Because Sun Tzu has the best skill damage in uh, as an epic in the game. So it has commander synergy, essentially. Um, this second one, uh, you should not be attacking cities, especially if you're in the free-to-play category. Um, you should not be attacking cities on your own. Then you've got increased attack and defense, which is awesome. And then uh, you have, uh, okay, normal attack is fine. Expertise. Oh, that increases that skill. Um, what was your question, Castro? Uh, do you recommend for a new player to uh, max wise you or skip wise you? Okay. I was, I was getting to that. That's coming up soon. So, okay. if you're not free to play... There are two commanders that you want to pair with Sun Tzu. Um, and both of them are very tanky. Both of them are very tanky commanders that you combine them with Sun Tzu so that your march can stay alive on the battlefield for a long period of time. And... While your march stays alive for a long period of time, your Sun Tzu is able to do more damage. And those commanders would be Richard the First, Richard the First. Richard the First. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Uh, please participate. Um, or Charles Martel. Now, the reason why uh, this part gets a little bit complicated is because <sighs> Charles is a golden key chest commander and 
with golden chi uh, with golden key chest commanders you have to get lucky essentially you have to get lucky that you're going to open golden chests and that you're going to get heads for um for that particular can, can uh commander that you're looking for charles a lot of people would say charles is better than richard um having to do with the skills that charles has as well as the longevity of being able to use charles there's people who are in season of conquest that still have charles ysg as their garrison on their city um set times huh set times set time. well i mean it's still a good it's still a good garrison um sure. Uh, yeah, it's better than nothing. If, uh, like, this is a little bit higher level, but if you have Guan Yu paired with Alex, which a lot of people say um, to do until you get Scipio, which now the meta's changed a bit, but... Yeah, buddy. Okay, buddy. I'll be right there. Alright? Thanks, bud. Yeah, restart your computer, okay? Restart your computer. Um, I've tested Guan Yu and Alex as a pair compared to Guan Yu and Charles with Double Relic from the museum. And uh, Guan Yu with Charles Double Relic does better than Charles Alex. Um, this testing was done before Alex had a museum buff of his own. So I don't know if that would uh, make it any better. But, uh, again, the longevity of Charles is great, but he's a gold key commander, meaning that you either have to get lucky with gold keys or you have to invest universal heads into him. Now, Richard, on the other hand, uh, no, the, uh, oh, sorry, yes, on Sandboxy, the accounts are on separate emails, yes. Um, Richard the first is the first, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, no, 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 continue. <laughs> He's the first commander that comes out in what's called the Wheel of Fortune event. And the Wheel of Fortune event is the best place for somebody who's free to play or a low spender to invest their gems. Now, I didn't say that the Richard Wheel is the best place to spend gems. I said the Wheel of Fortune event is the best place to spend gems. And also, this is a good time for me to say that... Uh, a lot of people think that gems are the most important form of currency. They're the most important uh, asset. They're the most important, you know, um, resource to have in the game. But that's not actually true. You can get an infinite number of gems in this game uh, with spending an infinite amount of money. What you're going to be limited on are the universal golden heads. The universal golden heads are the most important resource in Rise of Kingdoms. No matter how much you spend, you will always be limited on the number of golden heads that you can get within a certain amount of time. That's why players with 500 million power worth of troops that have KVK-1 commanders can be overtaken by a, a by an alliance that's smart and has efficient uh commanders from season conquest now the wheel of fortune event is an event that comes uh i want to say like 60 65 to 90 days within your kingdom uh within within the start of your kingdom is when your first wheel of fortune event will take place and it uh it used to be a universal golden head wheel, which I don't recommend because the maximum spin on the universal golden head wheel is the is I think three heads, if I remember correctly. Um, but after the universal uh, head wheel, you're gonna have the Richard wheel. Now, the wheel itself is gonna have a hundred maximum spins. For you to be able to redeem 
a special chest. It's going to have a chest that you can redeem at 10 spins, uh, 25 spins, 40 spins, 75 spins, and 100 spins, something like that. There's a certain number of chests that you can have that go across a certain number of that go with, with, across a certain number of spins, but it's always a hundred. Heaven, have a good night. Thank you so much for hanging out and your participation. Bye. Good luck good with your thanks for helping us win. Um <laughs> Ark of Osiris. But uh so the way that the way that the wheels work is they show up on every other Tuesday once they start. So if you if you have a wheel on a Tuesday um, you can expect that wheel to last three days and then, uh, you'll skip a week. And then the following Tuesday, you'll have another wheel and eventually, um, you'll have three wheels for one particular commander. Uh, on my restart account, Richard being the first commander that it shows up on the wheel. I did the 100 spin for each of the three wheels, meaning I did 300 spins. And with those 300 spins, so 100 spin on the first wheel, and then two weeks later, 100 spin on the second wheel, and then two weeks later, 100 spin on the third wheel. And uh, remember those chests that you're able to accumulate um, the hundred spins is the maximum for the premium chest. You can spin, I think it's 65 spins per day times three days. That ends up being, uh, 195 spins, which in my opinion, spinning after a hundred is not worth it. Cause you're not putting it towards those guaranteed heads inside the chests for you to collect. <clears throat> but, um, after on my restart account, I spun the Richard wheel 100 spins for all three times. After 300 spins, I was able to get my Richard to 5531 without using any universal sculptures that I got from the wheel. Okay, so that's what you can expect. Now, 100 spins on the wheel is about 75,000 gems. So 300 spins on the wheel is about 225,000 gems. So yeah, if that's 200. A good question. If 225,000 gems sounds like a lot to you, then don't invest it in Richard. Do the best you can with bulking up your Charles with the golden keys. And in the meantime, use your Bjorn Ironside um, while you wait for your Charles to trade better. All right, go ahead. Um, go ahead, Castro. Uh, on average, how many heads did you get from the three wheels total? Well, I can't, I can't remember, but enough to make it to 5531. Five, so... Um, oh, that's nice. So if you, uh, if you want to figure out how many heads goes into five five three one, then uh, that's the number of average heads I got over the three hundred spins. So on average, uh, eighty heads per wheel. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty good. Um, so you said a hundred spins and new account it was five five three one. So no, Damon, it was uh, it was. 100 spins for each wheel times three wheels is 300 spins. So 300 spins got me to 5531 without using any universal heads for Richard. Um, so I also had universal heads that came with that. Also on the wheel, there's lots of speed ups and resources that are useful early on in the game uh you'll get mad when you roll like a five spin and you land on three gold stars it's pretty fucking brutal um for so a hundred spins is about seventy five thousand gems so if you do 300 spins that's seventy five thousand times three which adds up to be two hundred twenty five thousand gems roughly for 300 spins so if two hundred twenty five thousand gems sounds like a lot for you then don't use them on the Richard the First wheel. Use them. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm gonna head out, guys. See you guys. All right, back out later, man. Um, use use your Charles uh, and the heads that you get from the golden keys on your Charles. Um, uh, but while you're waiting for your Charles to trade more positive, 
Use your use your Sun Tzu with Bjorn Ironside. Okay. Um. What what I like to do is I like to take. Yeah, Sun and Bjorn. Um, unless you can do. Sun Charles or Sun, uh, with Richard. Um, now, Mi Minamoto, which a lot of people refer to as Money Moto, is a fantastic investment in the game. Thank you, Castro. 78,000 gems. Um, the... Getting Minamoto expertise and the amount of damage that he does and his ability to use the peacekeeping tree and then switch over to the skill tree once you start uh, fighting in KVK. Minamoto, being able to expertise him using just money. Uh, I think basically a smart investor can spend about 300 bucks and get Minamoto expertise. The reason I why it's uh, $200, huh? Uh, it's $200. Well, yeah, but also cost. the VIP levels and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, um, it's gonna cost you a lot. Uh, VIB 9, huh? Uh, it's gonna cost a lot getting VIB 9 fast by the, the well. Chest. So that's what I'm saying is You're that right. it, it, it varies. Uh, so like you know, you can definitely have Minamoto expertise and VIP level 9 before KVK 1. Um, and depending on how fast you want Minamoto expertise means how fast are you going to get to VIP level nine? The way you get to VIP is b either buying bundles or investing gems into VIP points. So obviously you can purchase an unlimited amount of gems and you can get to VIP nine day one, but that maybe would cost you 2000 bucks to get it on the first day. Um, or you can wait for 45 days and buy bundles as they pop up um either the writer of history bundles which are super valid um or they're they're super economical they're super um value heavy uh the writer history the writers of history bundle is the one that pops up for five bucks that uh every time you unlock a legendary commander it's a bundle for five bucks that gets you 10 golden heads <sighs> Yeah, you might end up with VIP points uh, from golden chests in in the gift section of your alliance. Uh, that's another reason why it's important to join an alliance that has some spenders in it because you can live off of the runoff of their spending. But um, anyway, if you are a moderate spender, at least in the game, you can have two solid KVK marches. One of which being Richard Sun Tzu. And the other one being Minamoto uh, Chow Chow. If you're able to run a Richard Sun Tzu and a Minamoto Chow Chow. And you're able to have 300,000 T4 troops for uh, KVK 1. You're going to be in a good spot. A lot of people, again, they will think that having three marches uh, that are semi-decent as opposed to having two marches that are good. A lot of people think the three marches that are semi-decent is better. But having the two marches that are good are def is definitely going to be um, is definitely going to be better. And uh, also, your hospital capacity, uh, you got to remember that as you're going into fights, your hospital is going to start to fill. And then as your hospital gets full, um, you can use healing speed ups to heal your hospital while you're in the middle of battle. But then eventually your healing speed ups are going to run out. And at that point, most people that are not high spenders will choose to back out of the fight 
teleport to a safe zone, and then batch heal until they have fully recovered their troops and no longer have troops in the hospital. Um, but people that are higher spenders, after they run out of healing speedups, they tend to use universal speedups on their hospital um, in order to make sure that their troops don't die unnecessarily from field fighting. Um, and that's a, it's a much deeper discussion, but the ideal KVK one marches are Richard Sun Tzu, uh, and, uh, Minamoto Chow Chow. But if you're free to play, then you definitely want to max Sun Tzu and Bjorn Ironside as best as you can. Um, and that's probably going to be your only KVK one March. If, if you're not able to expand on that. Now, if you're not able to get three high quality commanders, like let's say you're not able to do both Chow Chow and Richard, let's say you're able to do Minamoto and you're able to do only one of the two Chow Chow or, or Richard. Um, I recommend going with the Richard and then using a commander like uh, Buy Bars or Buy Bars or Pelagius as a secondary to your Minamoto. Um, I don't necessarily know which one is better because I usually invest in Chow Chow on my accounts. So you may want to run some tests. The way I like to run tests is I'll put a march together of 15,000 troops and I'll go attack a level 25 barbarian march and I'll see which one gets better trades. Um, sometimes that can be a little bit faulty though because certain commanders have like barbarian based skills where they do more damage to barbarians. So, you know, fighting a person is a little bit different or you can practice during an MGE event where you're trying to get, um, where you're trying to get points for the during the kill event uh so in that circumstance maybe you can say hey like let's let's do 20,000 troops each of t4 um infantry and then or sorry t4 calves and then you can see how your t4 calves with minamoto pelagius um stacks up against minamoto uh, by bars you review the report re you review the reports and you see which one caused more severely wounded um, and that's generally a good benchmark to figure out which one's better or you know like by bars and Pelagius heads um, sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll have Pelagius at five 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 one uh, and your by bars is at five one 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 just because you ended up not getting a lot of buy bars heads in your chests. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe you pick one based on the luck of the draw of what you got, you know, uh, or you could go with Belisarius. Um, Belisarius is a very fast March, um, because he's got the mobility tree and the peacekeeping tree. The other uh, commander that has the peacekeeping and mobility tree is Chow Chow. And uh, the reason why that's important is because on the peacekeeping tree here, you've got increases march speed by 9%. And then on the mobility tree, you've got um, when this troop departs, you can increase the speed by 60%. You got march speed increased by 6%. Uh, and then march speed again by six percent there may be a couple more on this side i can't quite oh is that it nope uh, i already did that one um oh march speed by three percent is this first dot here and here's another three percent for the calves and then here are your march speed dots on uh the calf spot so basically you have a really fast march and the reason why a fast march is good is because you can run away quickly. If you start fighting somebody and you notice that, you know, 
they're doing 800 damage to you per hit and you're only doing 300 damage to them per hit maybe that's not the best opponent to fight against so because you have a fast march you're able to get away quickly um so belisarius is a good choice in that regard to go with your minamoto um keep in mind that your primary commander is the only one where the talent trees the equipment and the level matter the only thing that matters for your secondary commander is skills so if you were to look at my um if you were to look at my hera i have a heraclius that's level 10 but it's expertise early on in the game if you're able if you know that a commander is going to be a secondary commander uh you um you don't need to invest the experience tomes in them to get them to level 60. you just need to get them to four stars so you can expertise them so for example if you can't afford to get richard to level 60 instead you can only afford to get sun Tzu to level 60 because it costs less experience tomes to upgrade an epic than it does a legendary um then have sun Tzu be your primary and only upgrade richard to level 30 or if you're lucky enough to get the four star upgrade on level 10 um then you only need to upgrade him to level 10 but uh the level the upgrading from level 10 to four stars is only about works only about 65 percent of the time so you have to get kind of lucky on that the way you do that is uh show you here So once you get a commander to level 10, what you want to do is you want to use four of the spread apart stars and two of the clumped stars. If you use four of the spread apart stars and two of the clumped stars, you have a 60% chance of getting the extra boost of star power that will take this uh three and a half stars and push it to four stars there you go there's a level 10 with four star nebu and those clump stars and those spread stars are very difficult to get early game so anybody that you're planning on using as a primary commander um don't waste the the star trick on them just use the individual stars because anybody that you're planning to use as a primary um these these single stars are going to be much less valuable than these clump starts clump stars for secondary commanders <laughs> 